Hello, adventure! There's nothing more that brings me joy than a brand new episode of my favorite podcast. But I always do need a refresher, so let's find out what happened last time on The Incredible Party! Recovering from the defense of the Paladin camp, the party reviews some history found in Samuel's stolen journals. Shaft and Falzern finally bringing Shakara and Mia up to speed on everything they know about the eyes of Dendar, the scythe of Limic, and the armor of Kalar. Utilizing Falzern's newly acquired anti-magic device, he stifles the illusion magic cast upon the book containing the Zelwick family lineage, uncovering a link between Kalar and the good family. And now the harrowing adventure continues. My, my god, she is old. <laughs> I don't know that I want to kill her anymore, or that I can kill her. Yes, I, I think she may be a lot more powerful than she has let on. And, and well, you know, perhaps this could be an ancestor of Isabella's. It, it may not be Isabella. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it's an ancestor. Yeah, for sure, but her family is really powerful. Leland does the handwriting on this uh, separate little section of the family tree look the same as the Zelwick section? Uh, you can make me an investigation. 21. Natural 20. I mean, this the whole tree, uh, like, it's very clear that throughout the centuries the tree's been filled in, right? So in various places, they look like they're have, like some of the inks are, are, are different colors. Some some obviously what's higher up at the top of the tree, which would have come first as far as lineage goes, uh, there, the ink in it is more faded. So, so, so this offshoot, which again, trying to explain exactly what it looks like without actually showing you a picture, it does look as if like this branch of Kalar and now you've discovered plus good equals, you know, this, this, these city names. It looks out of place here, and it does look like it uh, is scrawled in at about though the same time as like the beginning of of this tree. Mm. So whoever started the tree wrote this side note, also. Correct. Yes. Like they were planting two different seeds at the same time to grow into great big trees, but one tree got <laughs> stunted and stopped its growth. Now you uh, also, I guess Shakara does. Uh, you Shakara has no idea where this book came from, or who actually authored it, right? So uh, to determine how act actually how old it was or when it was penned, uh, it, like impossible, right? Without without additional no carbon background dating. knowledge. There's sorry. There's no uh, there's no carbon dating spell. <laughs> <laughs> but Bill is really. I mean, <clears throat> Falzerin is really smart. <laughs> he knows things. Cast how old spell, you know, that there's yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Totally. So what do you think the three city names are? Like found, founders of cities? Like children moved there? I don't I don't think it's people. I think it's the actual cities. I I don't think this is two people getting together and making these. Oh? This, this is this is something else. Could I do some sort of check to, like, what do I know about Barrick's history as Mia? Like, what was I born and raised and told? Uh, sure, you want to roll a history check? With advantage. 16. The only thing that you, uh, or as growing up, that what you've been told is, is basically, like, the Bright Woods pretty much made Barrick what it is. Uh, now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you've been, you haven't been told that their Bright Woods founded this the city of Barrick, but basically the Brightwoods have always been in Barrick and have always been a staple of that city, and then hence why, you know, how, how how they've garnered their their wealth over the years, over the generations of, of the Brightwood family, and their their reputation, right? Uh, as most of Aspar does know the Brightwood name. But would I have heard good or Kalar growing up type thing? No, no, certainly not. You don't have any knowledge of there actually being a person named Barrick, like founding the city or anything or anything like that. I don't know. This doesn't really correlate with what I learned growing up. I just... So if they're locations, then that means something's at those locations. 
And I don't think it's the pieces of the armor because, you know, he's been searching for them and and we have, you know, we sort of know where those pieces are for the most part. Who's the author of this tree? Like, who wrote this here? You found this book with cultists' things? No, not no, this no. one. Where's it from? This belonged to Alamar. What? From Alamar's library? Yeah, Alamar sort of helped us out. Okay, wait, so why are we just it? reading it now? Because we're looking, we have the time to look at it. Oh, okay. Um, Mia's a little bit like. <laughs> there's, a lot of, there's a lot of information here, and most of it's probably useless. Sure. This seems to be something. Yeah. We could have been looking into it all this time. Well, uh, be- better late than never. Why would the Zelwicks hide the name Good? That's a great question. How do we know Good isn't hiding the name Good? Another great question. Come again? I mean, anyone could cast the spell on this book. We know as he's been to Heracleon. We know she's been in Alamar's library. Oh, I see. Hmm. Why would she want to hide this? Well, if she suspected we were going to go through things, I, I don't know. Cover her own tracks. You think she knew we were going to take this book or find it? That's sort know. of scary. Well, perhaps just in case anyone were to find it, she wanted to protect this knowledge. Is there any other mention of Kalar anywhere in any of these books? I mean, I guess we should look. Falzern's carrying around all these books that he hasn't even read. So, so Falzerin and uh, and Shaft and when Grimby, we didn't read anything other mentions, did we? In Samuel's journals, you, I mean, there's constant references to the armor of Kalar, but uh, uh, in the context of a person existing named Kalar, nothing you found. Is there anything that would tie these three cities' name together, or s- these three cities named together in any other instance? Uh, why don't you roll me, roll me just a straight intelligence check. Falls are in. You should do this. 13. Uh, I mean, I think with a 13 after, I mean, you've, you all have been discussing, discussing this for, for, you know, an hour or two here. And it's clear that from these, especially now with the revelation to Mia that this Zelwick lineage book is not, wasn't part of Samuel's possessions. There's two sources of information here. So these three city names most likely are the answer to whatever riddle that the cultist family motto or or, writ or poem that you found in his very first journal, like they correlate to each other. So you've basically found answers to some of the questions posed in this riddle. Well, anyway, I would share that information I gained. I will also add to that uh, that those three cities specifically, uh, as far as you have known and discovered, have absolutely nothing to do with the towers, right? Or where the the positions of the towers. The towers were not there. Yeah, yeah. they're the furthest, basically, from from the activity that the paladins have been. Basically, the southern part of southern part of Aspara for like <laughs> four decades, almost, right? Yeah, so guys, they they knew these were the were these the arid landscapes. I'm not sure, but they knew these cities were tied to something else. Yeah, m- maybe the scythe. Yeah, what what do we know about this scythe? Very little, really, to be fair. And who's Father Limic? Why why have I never heard I've never heard that name before? I have told you all I know of him. And is he father because he's a priest or father because, you know, like, you're auntie and so he's, like, a... Shakara Shrugs. Member? Okay. All we know is the, you know, he had a scythe. I think it was probably when he was uh, banished, they took that, like they did with the armor, and dispersed it around. They broke the scythe up, so maybe a piece of this scythe is in each of these cities or hidden someplace. When you were in Barrack, did they have any kind of, you know, place that they would keep a relic uh, artifacts or relics or something that might be uh, you know did your family have some kind of a hidden away s- locked up safe someplace where they kept stuff where nobody was supposed to look at it real expensive stuff 
I look to the DM. Well, I mean, obviously, you have no knowledge of uh, some type of, like, hidden space kept by your, your parents. But there pl- certainly in the temple, there are plenty of relics of Thor, like, you know, on display for for the worshippers uh, to, to come and worship at almost. Like, uh, what would be equivalent of, like, you know, like a crucifix or, or that kind of stuff, right? I, I don't remember seeing, like, a sheath or a blade or anything. I mean, we have artifacts, sure. I mean, I didn't really go through my parents' private things. I mean, what do we know about Zexa? I mean, it's there's a portal there. Yes. That's all I know. I don't know anything about Alton Chick. Zexa's definitely where you met Izzy, right? Yeah. Wonder what she was doing. We were just there for a job. I don't hang out in Zexa. I mean, sort of a backwards town, really. Her cave could have had it, right? You told me there was, like, a lair. There was a bunch of crap in there. I mean, Falzrin, do you remember anything? Yeah, well, a handle to a sword looks like crap. Till you put it together. I mean, I don't recall anything. No, I, I, I can't think of anything that would resemble part of a scythe, but it's, it's possible, I suppose. There was a hole in the wall we didn't go in, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Leland, do you want, uh, should we make a history check or something in case maybe our characters remember something that uh, John or I are forgetting? Uh, no, I don't think there is anything that either your characters would remember. Um, just obviously the both of you know that uh, as, far, as far as you know, your characters know, Isabella was in Zexa uh, as she was creating and testing the Arcanist armor, right? Uh, and, and Chucky had gotten a hold of it and was using it for what he thought, what, what he was trying to do good with it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that's, that's what you discovered uh, about Isabel's presence in Zexa. And I don't think you uncovered anything else that would hint at there being some other type of motive uh, on her end. But again, you weren't there for very long. You pretty much stumbled upon the cave, or, or uh, sorry, I uh, correct that. You uh, had captured Chucky, and Chucky led you to the cave, right? So, other than what was in there, the only evidence you found was of like creation of the armor, because that's where you found Arcanist uh, schematics, right? That you've seen a number of times, kind of bouncing around. Hey, Shakara, did uh, was is there a portal in Alton Chick or Barrack? Is there any connection there? No, not that I'm aware of. I don't know everything about Barrack, but I mean, my family pretty prominent there. I'd, I can't imagine us having a portal. Well, I don't think you'd, be, you'd know about it. It was Isabella's portal. I doubt very much she would tell you. You underestimate the Brightwood's knowledge of their own town. Well, we believe that Isabella is interested in Dendar because she, we believe she is serving Dendar. Yes. We Would know Isabella be also searching for the scythe of Father Limic? I'm sure she wouldn't. I would like it to be destroyed, and so nobody could bring Father Limic back. Yes, Father Limic and uh, Dendar se- certainly seem to be at odds with one another. They were not friends. This whole book makes like Alamar and Izzy helping each other. It kind of makes more sense. Maybe they had some sort of allegiance to each other? Well, I, I don't know if we can jump to that conclusion. I, I think... She was helping him become a lich. She was totally fine with it. Well, he was Alamar him. had no love for Father Limic. He, he released Geneva. Yes, that's true. It just was so surprising to see her in Heraklion as an elder, right? It's, it's at, making a little sense now. Well, I guess we don't know for sure that this entry into uh, alongside the Zelwick family tree here necessarily means that there was any cooperation between previous Zelwicks and this Kalar and Good dynamic duo. Yes. Sure, but just as Almar brags about his lineage and being on Heraklion for years and generations and generations, I mean, the Goods have been around, obviously. Isabella is quite old herself. She tell you how old she is? No, but she is very powerful. I'm beginning to see that. I don't know that I can just 
take her out, like I keep saying. What do we know about Geneva? She's a deep scion. Yes, but before that, uh, she, she was respected on Heracleon, and as we've recently learned, was helped by Alamar to break free from uh, ties to patronage to uh, Father Limic. Uh, apart from that... She had a very sordid past. She did things, she told me, for Father Lemmick, that like she what? deeply regretted. Yeah. Well, what like did what? Father Lemmick make her do? I believe she murdered people. She assassinated people for Father Lemmick. Do, do we know who it would have been that Father Lemmick wanted assassinated? Perhaps that could hold some clues. I do not know. Hmm. Is, was Geneva, f- she wasn't from Heracleon. Where she, where she was from? I do not know. Do any of us know that? What does, uh, mm-hmm. I guess Falzern knows the most about the people of Heracleon. What does Falzern know of Geneva's past? Uh, I think Falzern, coming from Heracleon, basically, you know, as old as Falzern is, since you were born, the elders have always been the elders, right? Like, they they have not changed in your life lifetime or since you've come, I guess since you've, because you, you weren't born in Heracleon either, since you came to Heracleon, they've always been the elders. So as far as Falzern knows, the elders have just always been on Heracleon. So as far as uh, knowing when and, and, you know, the story of the previous elders, like how they came to become elders, like that's something you you never uh, really would have discussed with uh, any of them. Although Geneva did take a liking to you specifically. Uh, why don't you roll me a history check then with advantage as well? At 25. Okay. Uh, you recall fairly distinctly having a, uh, maybe a late dang conversation in, in the library, uh, the, uh, the knowledge center with, with the Geneva that Geneva actually was born in the Phalaren Forest, and uh, being an elf herself, she she's nowhere near as old as, as uh, Alamar, obviously. Um, but she had been in Heracleon for about 60 years. So it was, you know, six or seven decades ago that, that Alamar had performed this ritual for, for Geneva. She certainly didn't get into any... Uh, of of uh, her sordid past, like what Shakara is recounting, but she actually hadn't been in Heracleon uh, relative to Alamar. Again, put that in perspective, or had been an elder for for all that long, really. But you do also know that very shortly after her arrival in Heracleon, Alamar made her an elder, or I suppose the elders of the time, because it's it's not it's more of a it's more of a democracy rather than a dictatorship, right? Or at least it was, anyways. Uh, so, yes, Geneva was very quickly voted into to eldership. That's that's pretty much all you know. But yes, she certainly did not was not born or or, or grew up in Heracleon. Uh, I would say she spent by the end of her life she spent more time outside of Heracleon, more of her life out outside of Heracleon than on Heracleon. Okay, so I'll, I'll share that knowledge with the rest of the party. Well, while we're waiting on Sammy, maybe we uh, take Bakla back to the city and take him back to Jolvi. I mean, he's not going to do any good up here. I do not want to go in the sewers. We don't know when Samuel will arrive. We want to be here when he gets here. How long would it take to... He said it's about a mile. Bro, Uber of the this city kid land. over there. Yep, I would say the, the round trip would uh, be an hour or two, depending how long how much time Yashi spent in uh, Drakal. Well, you know, uh, Shakara, we're not that far outside the city. Even if we miss Samuel's arrival, I don't, I don't imagine he's he's going to leave right after he arrives. Yeah, we could... I mean, is there room on Denny to pop the three of us on there? I, I need to go see Kepley anyway. Or we can all go back into town. I'm not quite sure of Denny's capability. I think three might be stretching it. Well, we're sort of halves. And I point over it. Yeah, Bakla and Shaft count as one. We we could try, I suppose. He can ride on my shoulders. Put a big put a big cape over both of you, and you look like you're just one big person. <laughs> one normal sized person. Don't come on. That's let's, right. Let's be that's fair. right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, uh, I, I suppose Shakara Mia, it, if it could convince you to to take a small trip back to town, is there any are there any supplies, any anything that you might want to get while we're in town? Who knows what we might be facing over the next couple days? If we're going up in the mountains, there are a few things we should probably pick up. That is not a bad idea. Let me leave word with Sally that we are traveling to town and we'll be back. Yes, uh, it shouldn't take too long, I don't think. Wait, so we gotta walk and you get to fly? It, it, it doesn't matter to me, we can all walk. It's just right over there. Uh, I, I can't walk. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm just so tired, but whatever, it's fine. Well, I mean, cover you up, right? Well, B- Baklo, we can certainly, uh, we can use my my magical broom to lighten your load on your way back to the city. I'm more than happy to do that. I get up and hand the book back to Falzerin and go walk out the tent to go tell Sally at the tower that we're going to make a trip into Drukal. Is Bakla un... I mean, is he, like, very hurt? Is it something that we could, like, heal him? I think his ankle is the biggest problem, right? Yeah, his his, his ankle uh, will just take some time before he, he'll be able to put his full weight on it. But other than that, like he's you know he's had his own little short rest. Um, I think uh, Mia did heal him up a little bit, I believe. Uh, so it's more like, yeah, he just he just needs the time to recover from it. Four to six weeks, his ankle will be just like me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Shakara's gonna go off and notify Sally of your absence from the camp. And so we're done with looking through the journals and the books and stuff then. We're going to go to Dragal. Yeah, I think so. As long as Samuel's not there. I mean, we go out and we look and he hasn't arrived yet, I assume. Yeah, Shakara, you get to, to the tower and it's just still Sally and, and uh, another paladin or two there. Uh, she's still like going over maps and, and all that stuff. And Samuel is, is not in the tower, at least. And... It- it's a, he's coming in on a ship, so we'd, we'd be able to see that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Sally, have you had any word from Coltis? I'm just still awaiting his arrival. I have plenty to go over with him when he gets here. Shaft needs something in the city. We are going to take a quick trip there and back. I, I mean, I imagine that I'll still be here when you return. I'll turn around and walk out. Covering up Bakla back in the t- in the tent cover. Yes. We give him a little umbrella. We found. We're gonna, we're gonna swaddle Bakla back up again. <laughs> okay, we can wrap up Bakla. We'll put him on the broom, and we, you guys can make your way. You all can make your way to back to the call. So, as you're moving out of the tent and through the camp, basically, you know, you take a path directly south, which would lead you to the main road that connects Drukal and Altenchik, and then move. Uh, west from there, right towards towards the city. Uh, but as you're moving through the camp, you see that activity is, is some activity at least is filtering back into the camp, right? As there are more paladins in the middle of camp here, right? After having responded to this, and you know, the, the, we're now like two hours that have passed since you were at the front line, basically. Uh, still, though, you you can you can see actually off in the distance because of how clear the day is. Uh, you can see the rising force still uh, basically above out at the at the, at the front line, uh, and obviously Braun. Assuming you assume that Braun, Drag, and Halsa are still on the rising four, as you haven't seen or heard any word from them since you split from the, from the boat itself, right? Uh, but yeah, I mean, you you make it to Drukal in about thirty minutes, uh, probably with you know towing towing Bakla, uh, and he's just completely fully wrapped. He like burritoed him up, right? His face is completely covered. Uh, he's having a bit of trouble like staying on on the broom like that, but you you get him to Drukal and you're back into the city. So you want to go directly to the theater then to Jolvi? To the theater. You guys take Bakla there. I'll go see uh, Kepley and then we'll meet back up here. Where where should we meet? Do you think Shaft? Where do you want to meet? Uh, right here at the exchange. I'll stay here. I, I've got some things to talk to him about. Some family burial situation certainly certainly okay okay oh man i can't wait to see jolvi yes yes i i hope he's well and and i look forward to uniting you bakla with 
with one of your own kind who will hopefully be able to keep you safe as you recover. I'm like kind of scared to come back without a circlet. We said we would give him a circlet. Ugh. Oh, for Jovi? Yeah. I go, uh, hmm. I reach down in my bag and I go, I look around. Is there anybody watching us uh, in the city here? Or are we just sort of, nobody's paying much attention to us? Yeah, no, you you know, like the, the gate isn't, it's not like a manned gate or a closed up gate for the city. It's it's basically an opening in the wall, right? The and the the small and, and short perimeter wall that uh, runs around Drukal. So yeah, and then here are you a few people walking up and down the street, but no one's paying attention to you. All right, I'll sort of pull the circlet out and go over and grab Mia's arm and put it in her sort of palm it in her hand and go tell Jovi to write a song about me. Wait, where'd you where'd you get this? Um, I mean, I will. Yeah, I I acquired it. Oh, I see. okay. All right. Well done, Shaft. I like examine it for bloodstains. <laughs> I don't have any more. That's the only one I got. Okay, well, I appreciate you helping me keep my promise. Uh, yeah, you got it. All right, I I put it in my pocket. Pocket? Does my metal armor have pockets? Of course it does. <laughs> <laughs> You have a fanny. You have a fanny pack that you yes keep around your waist. <laughs> a, a fanny satchel. <laughs> All right. Well, Shaft, um, uh, be safe. We'll meet you back here uh, before too long. It shouldn't take us long. And I walk off towards Kepley's exchange. All right. I, I will take just uh, John, and the rest of you can get out of here. So I'm going to head over to the exchange. Uh, sort of walk up. Is the, is it open? The doors open? Or anything? I don't know what time of day it is or anything. Yeah, no, you're 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 in in the afternoon here, so it, it will be open. Um, and uh, so it, again, the, where the where the gate is is uh, pretty much that that eastern gate of Drukali is is almost on the border between Detmer and Hannah's district, right? Like literally walking down this road that through the gate, you can look to your left and then look to your right and see the difference in architecture. Uh, of the, the the two kind of regions of the city. Uh, so it's clearly like bisected by this this main road. And as you're walking down and through it, obviously this this road will lead you and take you past the Tickly as well, right? Uh, you see that the paladin presence that had been ramped up here seems to have, again, now is kind of subsiding as more of the paladins have moved to the encampment. In kind of to your right, though, in Hannah's, Hannah's district, it still looks like status quo as far as, uh, you know, just, just the people walking around on the streets. Um, there doesn't seem to be any general panic or, 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 or upheaval or anything, right? And then you kind of just watch the part, the rest of the party uh, move northwestward into Hannah's district as you continue down the, the road. So clearly... Uh, the events that have transpired over the past couple of days in the city itself uh, haven't entirely been parsed out by the general populace, right? Uh, but you do, you know, again, make it to Kepley's, and it is open. Okay. I walk in, make sort of look around for Kepley or see who else is in the room. And Kepley's exchange is often very busy. Uh, there, there are a patron at, at his little booth and then someone basically in, in line kind of waiting. And as you walk in, he, he sees you, obviously. And oh, uh, if you'll excuse me, uh, clear out now, clear out. <laughs> Tobias, my boy, my boy, my boy. And he kind of shoes out the two people waiting, right? And, and uh, okay. empties the store to, to speak with you. You, you want to lock that, Kepley? Yes, 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 yes. And, and Gates with the Red Bulls, my boy. I need, I need the bag. Uh, of course, of course. Uh, do you have a place we can sort of look at it where no prying eyes might be able to, to to see? Yes, yes, yes. Please, come, come. And he'll open up, uh, like, you know, along the booth, they got, like, the little section that kind of pulls up so yeah. you can clear it. So he wa- walks <laughs> you through. But I walk right underneath Well, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so does he. <laughs> it's just for show, okay? It's out of habit. <laughs> so he, and he walks you back into, uh, there's only a single door in the booth area behind him right and you walk through it and based so so the percentage of what this front little like uh patronage area is would probably be about 10 percent of the entirety of kepley's exchange 
and he walks you into like if you were like think of like walking into a bank with lock boxes like they're just rows and rows of secured little cubbies pa like padlocks galore on, 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 on any of them right on all of them and rows and rows of different sizes um whatever he may need to tailor to the customer right and he's going to bring you back past these though to uh, another door and what what looks to be like his private office and he's secured your bags specifically in his his private safe is what it is and as secure as the lock boxes look this safe looks like it's it would be like 10 times as hard to crack into right like this is hmm. where the important stuff right his, his personal items and obviously this bag he's gotten from you and you see him twist a uh, dial one puts in this this code second dial third dial pulls out a key unlocks four locks right like unchains <laughs> it's like it, it's a very secure looking uh safe and it opens up and will hand you your bag of course okay yeah i'm gonna pull out the cipher lay it on his desk and and open it up and go uh, sort of hey come here and take a look at this with me and then I'm going to sort of give him, I'm going to give him the rundown of sort of a little bit about the, the Zelic history and the, uh, you know, what we saw in the other books. You know, give him sort of a brief overview of it and say, I'm trying to figure out how this all goes together. Because I've got some time. I assume i got an hour or two to dig through this. So what is there anything there i can sort of piece together the cipher giving us any information based on what we've just discussed so the cipher itself which we haven't really looked at in detail or, or, or explained in detail right at all it is this think of like if you were to have a little address book like a little black book of names and phones like that's about its size it's very small jet black leather no inscriptions at all on any of it and you flip it over i would say it's um it's thickness it's probably like a quarter of an inch thick right it's a very very small book and you flip it open and the pages are blank there's nothing written on anything it doesn't look like there is anything inked in, in any of these pages as you flip through it okay i sort of look at kepley and i'll say it, it, this is something like uh, that happened with the other book. They had some kind of an illusion, illusion spell cast upon it where we couldn't, you know, see what was actually written. It was hidden. Uh, do you have anybody you know that you could call up to maybe help me out here? Well, I, I certainly uh, could, could help you with this, my boy. Uh, you, you say that this is uh, a piece of a tool that's used, though. Yes. Yes. Samuel Cultus is trying to put together this this armor I told you about, and as you you've seen the towers, right? And you know how oh, yes, those yes. those work. And like I said, these these eyes of Dindar are the power source that that drive these towers to find you know these this armor. But supposedly now that he has this piece, this this amulet that uh, that we got for him, this cipher somehow is going to utilize that to help him find the armor pieces that he needs left. Now, you know, I don't know if I really trust this guy or not, but supposedly he's here to get rid of the Niyogi. And, you know, the Niyogi are under Drukal now. I know you're safe in here, but we need it needs to they need to be taken care of. So for right now, he's the lesser of evils. He kind of strokes his chin for a second thinking. Well, um, perhaps there's a an activation word or uh, uh, some other something something else that you use to to I don't know activate it or, or, or some proximity thing or, or something. Uh, he's this, he uses this with with this amulet you found. Oh, that's you're probably right. We don't have the amulet anymore, but I know who has it. <sighs> that the problem is I don't know who to trust here. If too much information gets out this could be this could be a bad thing it could turn around on us this could be very powerful somebody that gets this whole suit of this armor could be i don't know almost indestructible well uh, short of getting the hell out of dodge uh, i would say that 
it may be best to kiss some ass <laughs> to this person that will ultimately be wearing this armor, perhaps? Yeah, I know. I, I don't like kissing ass if I don't have to, but that might be the only way I can do this. And I sort of take the book and you say it's a, it's a really small book, so it would actually just fit in like one of my pockets inside of my jacket. Very easily. Yes. Okay. So I think I'll do that. I'll pocket it back up. And then, uh, I'm going to also explain to him the situation with Nina and the, uh, the mechanical creatures and pull out that skin sack that I have with Nina's, uh, what I assume is a soul of some kind or whatever, and ask him if he has any, has heard anything or has any information through his contacts about any of these mechanical beings or how they're powered or anything. He'll, he'll like put out a hand to, to take it and examine it if, if you, you know, t- like questioning yeah. hand. Okay. And you'll give it to him and he'll, he kind of in, inspects it and again starts to like stroke his chin. <laughs> my, my goodness, uh, a whole person in this little bag. I haven't, uh, I don't have any information specifically about how these, these mechanics work, but uh, again, I, I do know somebody that perhaps could, could help you with this soul of uh, uh, some type of resurrection, perhaps. Possibly. She's in Victor, and I tell him the uh, hospital or where she was right. and sort of explain to him the room. I'll say, uh, if we can, uh, if you know somebody we can hire to somehow get her out of there, you know, sneaky, sneaky like, I'm going to pay them very well. You hold on to this. I don't, I don't know how it works, but I think if we get her and it together and we can somehow figure out how to re- re-put whatever's in this sack back into her body. I would be forever in your debt, my friend. You know there's no need for a record of debts, my boy. I think I know just the person. I put my hand on this shoulder. I knew I could count on you, Kepley. Nina, you believe she's, she's still alive, then? The last I saw her, she was... Uh... Stricken with madness, I should say. Tied down to the bed. Uh, she seemed almost insane, but I have a feeling that it has something to do with this extraction. Not the plague that ravages the city. Then I've only heard stories of anyone that con- contracts it. They do not recover. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I, I think this... Plague might be a ruse or something that's just trying to keep everybody out of Victor while this uh, this Jessica takes care of the things that she's been assigned to do in Victor. My, my goodness, uh, she must have quite uh, some influence then with the authorities in Victor. No, I think either uh, they are doing what they say. I think she might have some power over them, sure. There's there's a lot of things going on in Aspara that uh, there's more power, more things happening in Aspara than you know. Uh, it, sometimes it makes me wish that I n- never left Rockdale. Well, me too. And if I can get this to work out, that's where I'm going to be heading with Nita. Speaking of, my boy, uh, I don't know what it may mean to you, but I generally keep in regular contact with friends I still have in Rockdale, and the last few weeks I've received no word at all from them. Really? Nothing, no replies to my letters, uh, nothing like that. It is unusual. Yeah, it's so secluded, most people don't even know it exists. It has to. We are going to be heading up into the Vorag Mountains soon. Uh, the orcs have something to do with this. The tribes. I think they've been uh, mind controlled by the Neogi, and let's just hope they haven't 
done anything in Rockdale. Educated guess, how much longer do you think Drukal above the sewers is going to remain safe? Not long. It could be days. I mean, the, the, the city under the city is rampant with these things, and they've just attacked outside of the city, just near a mile from here. They have giants. They have large beasts. I, I don't think it's safe for you here, but uh, maybe maybe some you might have some time. We're gonna the uh, paladins are sort of holding them back. Well, I think it's time to put in a bit of a contingency then, my boy. Uh, for the two of us, if we need to hastily get out of Jukal, I'll arrange that. We'll have the capability to do so. I will say, I believe you've earned quite a bit of Lag's favor after returning his cessus to him. Ah, oh, good. How is uh, things going in the city now? Here it uh, seems to be the same. Uh, outside of my inner circles, I've still heard nothing of Hannah's death. It appears there still somebody is still trying to keep it as quiet as possible. Yeah, I... I mean, this is this is good for Lag. He gives him time to make some kind of a play. I, my assumption is Detmer's out of the picture, probably permanently. I would not count on his return. Uh, should I warn Lag of the threat to the city, though? I'm not sure what he can do. Yeah, it it, it wouldn't hurt to give him a heads up. Let him know. Let him know I told him. Of course. It's always good to have somebody else on my side, right? Lag may have held the smallest territory in Jukal, but now you, you're you right. He's hes the only one left. If the city's not his, I do not know whose it is. Yeah, I, I, I can't think of anybody Hannah would have and, you know, and take her place. She doesn't seem like the kind of person that had somebody, you know... Learning the ropes, as, as we might say. I, I agree. I, she acted as if she would live forever. Is the pussycat still open? As far as I know, I certainly have a bit of crossover clientele with uh, the, the pussycat palace, and it's still open for business, last I've heard. Well, there's so much to worry about, I... I I, I guess this, like I said, let Lag know what he can do, and if, if Lag runs through call, better for us. Now that you're in his favor, absolutely. Okay, I think at this point I'll, you know, give him the, the, whatever the skin sack and the few things, uh, put it back in the bag and everything, and give it back to him. Okay, I, I got to go meet up with the rest of the party, the rest of my friends. If anything goes wrong, you make sure you get out. I will. Uh, I'll try to contact you with my, with a meeting place, uh, perhaps, if it goes sideways for, for the two of us. Uh, a, a, a safe house outside of the city that we can both potentially hole up at. Sounds good, my friend. And I turn around and walk out. All right. Both of you walk under the board. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which he doesn't flip open this time. <laughs> you see, he reaches for it instinctively and then gives his head a, a, a quick shake and <laughs> takes his head away from it. <laughs> and then pretty much as soon as you open that door, like the people that were waiting, like immediately file back in. Uh, clearly a little bit annoyed as they kind of give you, each of them give you a, a, a bit of a dirty look <laughs> as they line back up at the booth. As they give me a dirty look, I, I just smile. So, VIP. <laughs> All right, uh, and now where for Shaft? Um, I think I'm going to just go... Do I think I have some time? Uh, you definitely know that it would take you longer to get to Kepley's than it would take them to get to the theater. So you're probably behind... Okay, so I think I'll just hang there thinking they're going to be back before too long. I'm expecting them back here. That's where I said I'd meet them. I, I don't have time to go down to the tavern and get a beer or anything like that. <laughs> uh, no, probably probably not. Okay, then I'll just sort of hang and over uh, waiting for them to come back. 
You could certainly, uh, you certainly have time to visit Tippy's though, if you wanted to go get a, a new suit, as it's only just down the road. But other than that, <laughs> we'll go over. It. Nah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> we'll go back. We'll go back to the rest of the party then. Shakara, Mia, Baldrin, Baklava, headed to the <laughs> <Yes>. theater. <laughs> Bakla still wrapped Baklava up. all wrapped up for leftovers. So as I had described to Shaft, the road at this gate that you walk in is is like the it by basically it bisects Detmer's district and Hannah's district. So you can look to your left and right and immediately notice the difference in architecture on to either of these districts, right? So you move immediately north into Hannah's district where there's there's ornate trimming and like and precious metalwork set into the side of the buildings, right? Highfalutin, uh, a number of people in the streets, and it does seem like walking through this part of the city that there, uh, according uh, as, as far as the general popul- populace looks, uh, it doesn't look like there's any panic or uh, any any type of uh, upheaval or uproar against what is like what has been happening here in the last couple of days i.e. Hannah's death and like the Neogi infestation literally below them so it does seem like still a bit of a status quo happening in, in Hannah's district here and it doesn't take you it takes you about uh, probably about 30 or so minutes to get to the theater from, from this gate here and you make it there with, with no problem I assume you're just immediately like beelining directly to the theater yeah. Yeah. No time to waste. You get there, and there's nobody in the ticketing booth, uh, and it does look like it looks like it's like closed. Try the door. Is it locked? It is not. It does open. Well, let's go in. Come on, we know where to find Jovi. You, yeah. I mean, you do know exactly where to go. You you move in, uh, basically into where they have like where the queue would form for the tickets, and then pass that into that grand marble with the big, huge staircase that leads to the upper upper booths uh, of the theater, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, how where do you want to go? Try to look for him exactly. Like, do you want to go to, tr- to the stage and try to, like, activate the platform there, or... Do you remember how to get there? I think so. But also, as I walk into the theater, I'll be like, Jovi! I don't know, he's probably observing. Or alert enough. So I kind of walk towards the platform, but, like... Okay, saying, so you're, you're gonna Jolvie. go... You're gonna approach the stage, then, calling, kind of calling out for, for Jovi. Yeah, I think uh, I would assume that he's he's either somewhere in here, um, up in the rafters, or wherever he hangs out if he's in the theater, or, or else down below um, where he took us to. Are there any signs that there may be Neogi about? Uh, why don't each of you roll me a perception? Good question. I would have preferred if you just said no. <laughs> Sure, you don't have the roll. I'll just tell you no. <laughs> may or may not be true. <laughs> Mia rolled a 24 with her oh, yoga good. sense. Shikari got a 16. Yeah, falls her and got a 3. So you get in here and basically get into the theater, right? And Bakla has thrown off his cover finally now that it's safe. And he's still holding on, holding on to Denny as he's basically trailing behind the three of you. And you walk in and immediately the sign of your fight, like any any of the, the vanquished jackal wear, is it obviously you know Hannah's body has been moved from the theater since you found it beneath the Pussycat Palace. But it doesn't look like there are no signs of any fight happened here. Even like Alamar's body is gone now, right? So it doesn't look like there's signs of any presence of any creature in here at all. It looks like it's completely deserted. But as you walk in, and Mia, you begin to call out for, for Jolvi you hear that organ music start to kind of pipe in from just everywhere, right? If you recall it, it sounds like it's just coming from the walls themselves, right? And the stage, this whirring mechanism sound starts to pick up and you know, you can kind of barely audible beneath the the, the organ, the, the rise and fall of, of the organ and the platform on the stage lowers and then 
engages again and comes back up, and there is Jolvi standing there with his little guitar, right? Kind of yes, letting out a riff on it, and he sees you know you, and then kind of the the music kind of starts to fade away as he, he finishes his number, and he spots like Bakla immediately. Jolvi, look, we found another Darkling. This is Bakla. So I, I didn't specifically describe Jolvi, right? We kind of just pass him off as a Darkling. But those that were actually in the Darkling Caves, which at this point, again, is only Falzern and Chaff. And I think Falzern might have been unconscious, unconscious. for this. <laughs> so, <Go there. laughs> so, so for, for the listener, when, you were in, when, they were in the, when the party was in, in the Darkling Tunnels, you passed by a room where there was some type of, of procedure or ritual being, being done to a Darkling. And you've only ever met an incarnation of Jolvi between the Jolvi that you slaughtered in the farmstead outside north of the city, or this Jolvi that you have befriended and has taken a liking to Mia specifically. There are like five, seven, five, like they're they're like human size, right? They're not short, they're not halfling size, whereas Bakla is. So so there's this type of ritual or, or process that a Darkling can undergo not that your characters would know, but obviously it, it's actually very dangerous and could result in the death of the Darkling. So, so Jovi runs over to, to Bakla and he like gets to it, takes a knee basically in front of him, uh, or I suppose he wouldn't need to because Bakla is still on Denny because he's having trouble walking. But he kind of you know it basically immediately embraces Bakla and the, the two of them kind of embrace each other, just ecstatic that they're not the last of their of their kind. You do see, though, Bakla kind of, as they come out of the embrace, Bakla quickly masks a, a, a disgusted look at the guitar, kind of slung on, on <laughs> Jolvi's, uh, Jolvi's side. <laughs> of course. You've returned! Yes, it, it's great to see you well, Jolvi. Um, it, it seems that this poor Bakla here was uh, enslaved by the Niyogi, mind-controlled, and has a, a huge gap in memory and thankfully that we were we were able to retrieve him uh, just in the nick of time and well he, he's injured but he's safe now that he's back with you and and also we have something for you that that we promised i look to mia i pull out of my plate armor satchel um <laughs> so i pull out a uh, circlet jovi as, as promised, we, we found you a circlet. You'll be, well, more protected, not completely immune to the Niyogi. This comes in a timely fashion. They have been trying to enter the theater. Seriously? The barricades aren't holding up, eh? As of yet, they have not succumbed to their pressure. They are still kept out, but periodically, yes, they... they the, the, there's pounding and, and thrashing on the other side. It's all I've done to keep them maintained. They do infest the tunnels. You best reinforce your blockades. Leaving here was quite a mess. I can't believe they're still coming this far underneath the city. Above ground, they've been driven quite a ways back successfully, but that is concerning to learn that uh, they're still trying to come up underneath the city this far in. I've been unable to explore or venture any further than the theater itself. I do not know the full condition of, of the tunnels, but I have been mapping them for you. Julvi, what, what what has been happening in the town over the past little while since we've left? As you know, I am mostly relegated to the theater itself. I do not venture from it, even above the ground, even at night. But within, as you can see around you, the gods of Hannahs, they've been in here frequently, cleaning up the mess as if nothing occurred. Interesting. That Does it seem like there's someone who's taken leadership in Hannah's absence? From my dealings with them, I could not tell, but there has not been a performance since that night. Okay, well, hopefully, I mean... This will help protect the theater, help protect you, help protect Bakla. Take care of him for us. We must go back to the tower. 
That is, you cannot stay, but perhaps I can perform for you we all. We do not have time. I'm sorry. We must get yeah, back. I'm, I'm really sorry. We, we're waiting for someone. We gotta get back to, to outside of town there, to that tower. There's battles going on. There's front line out there. Like, just protect what you have. Do what you can. I feel as though I cannot contribute at all. This is simply a piece of land that I stand guard against what good could this theater do if it were to be given up how much would that affect the cause negatively I mean of course it is nice knowing we have a place that is guarded we can come if need be yes ab absolutely Julia you, you shouldn't discount that the theater art it must survive it must survive we can't destroy everything and if you, if what you say is correct, that that this is Neogi trying to come through the tunnels and perhaps come up through the theater, uh, I think it it is of great value that that you are holding them off. Who knows? Perhaps, perhaps this is the main the main way that they would venture up from the depths through tunnels underneath this theater. It, it could be one of the only points of access that they have. There are numerous sewer openings around the city. They could pour out like the infestation they are in any number of places. What, what makes the theater so special, other than, of course, the performing arts? Well, per perhaps you're right. I, I don't know. I just, I think what you're doing here is important. And as Shakara said, it is, it is very good to know that we have a place that is safe and quiet and. We have, where we have a friend that we can come to. Is there anything that you need from us now? I have gotten by quite well on my own for many years. I, I, I am glad to know that you're out there championing for my people, as Bakla can attest. I will keep this place safe for as long as I can. I obviously cannot guarantee that it will always remain so. We understand, and we must be going. And I start walking back out the doors. Oh, wait, wait, I have my drawings done as well. And Bakla will handle, so now you have kind of, uh, between the two of them, it seems like, obviously there's there's lots of overlap of what they've drawn this crude map, and it does, uh, Jolvi's is, by leaps and bounds, more eloquent and... and, and <laughs> much more artistic, obviously, than Bakla's. Bakla's is incredibly crude, as if drawn by crayon by, like, a six- or seven-year-old. Still, obviously, good enough to, to actually use as a navigational device, but Jolvi's actually looks to be far more complete as well. But with the two of these pieces together, it does seem that you have the entirety of the, the sewers in addition to the Darkling tunnels that are, as you all know, uh, separate and hidden from the sewer sewerways uh, you have this map of, of all of it now I will nod to them and assume that Falzerin will take them and say thank you these will be most helpful Falzerin yes yes thank you so much and he will uh, grab the drawings ah Jovi you're the best I'm sorry we have to go so quickly but please be safe and I assure you, if there's any chance that there are more Darklings that, that we can perhaps rescue from the Niyogi, we will do our best. I know that you will. I'll walk out the doors. I'll follow. Take good care. And you see, he, you know, as you're leaving, he kind of puts an arm around around Bakla and, and helps him to one of the one of the seats as he dons the circular right and then begins to, to attune to it as, as you leave the theater. So do you all want to go directly back... To straight to Kepley's Exchange to meet with Shaft then? There's no other stops that any of you would like to make now that you're in the city. Uh, so so you all do know that you would get to the theater before Shaft would get to Kepley's. Because Kepley's is literally like across the city, basically, right? How far is magic, magic, magic from us? Uh, you would, basically, pretty much you would go almost back to the gate and then further south. Yeah, another 30 to 40 minutes of walking then. I would walk, I would start towards Kepley's. 
I've kind of got a one track mind and I'm not even like, I'm just exhausted. And that's our show. For more Aspara information, visit encouragableparty.com, where you can find all of our social media links, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, as well as our Patreon. Our patrons get exclusive content like blooper reels and patron-only mini campaigns. Our theme music was created by Josh Jarvis. For any of your musical needs, you can contact him at jamesmercymusic at gmail.com. All the rest of our sounds and music throughout our plays provided by tabletopaudio.com and of course our show sponsor Critical Hit Design for your design needs visit criticalhitdesign.com happy adventuring